Israeli can affect the German government. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not Italian. If I were Italian, I would attack the Italian government. Um, perhaps that will be that comes someday. The Italians will invite me to Italian nationality. I would not refuse. <laughs> um, I feel very tempted to test um, the credibility of the German Constitutional Court by um, requesting a temporary ruling, a temporary injunction, prohibiting the German government to consent within government and to consent within the European Council to a bailout of Portugal. I say I feel very tempted. I haven't yet made up my mind. And uh, as we have a coalition of 50, uh, the consultation which is necessary is enormous. Uh, it's not only a coalition of government like in Great Britain or Germany, it's a coalition of uh, German civil society. So it's, so it's a pluriverse. And I think even for the creditworthiness of our initiative, we are committed to uh, prove or to test uh, the willingness of the Constitutional Court uh, to examine the case. Because when the first injunction was made uh, in summer uh, last year, in the Greek case, they could still say, well, this is a unique case, it won't happen again, uh, this will not inflate. But now we have the third case, most probably. And if there's a third case, there will be a fourth case, and so on and so forth. This will make implode the European financial uh, stability facility sooner or later because we won't have enough, enough guarantors. <coughs> the good guarantors will all leave. Yeah. And finally Germany will have to pay for the rest. European paymasters, together with other very strong countries who have in common with Germany the same reluctance to accept uh, bailouts such as Finland, such as Austria, not to, not to forget our Dutch friends, and um, um, for the matter of politeness, uh, you have to mention Luxembourg as well, although, although I don't like Mr. Juncker and his raging um, European influence. So, we are in a very difficult and complex process where I would urge for early decision by the, by the German Constitutional Court, because of parallelly we have the initiative by the German government and by the European Council to change European law and to install in Article 122, Section 2, the mechanism which we have already been practicing, which is a new method. You create the mechanism which is totally a breach of law, which is violating um, the European treaty, although the European Commission and its legal service, which is far more when, oh, which is in a dramatic decline. It's no longer legal service, it's a service of legal feasibility. Yeah, I can tell you from, from pure knowledge, I worked there in 1980, it was still a legal service, and uh, uh, under the influence of Mr. Barroso, the legal service is a service of legal feasibility, and those who are very creative in developing European law are rewarded, I can tell you. So we are in a very, very complicated process. On one hand, we do our utmost to um, urge um, the European Constitution, the German Constitutional Court, to come to a decision. If they won't, um, a temporary injunction um, will be unavoidable. And on the other hand, there is a uh, political process uh, for the revision of uh, the European uh, Treaty, uh, installing, uh, we know now the draft, the European Financial um, Stability Facility as a legal instrument within Article 122, which of course I um, would um, again challenge because it would be, as a matter of fact, essentially the abolition of the no bailout rule. So <clears throat> our action is not Don Quixote, we visit it, it's not of symbolic value, it is a uh, litigation which is serious and which is conducted under my responsibility with the utmost of concentration and energy, the greatest respect for the different political opinions of the Coalition of 50, which I have uh, successfully, uh, so to speak, assembled. Um, but um, 
um, uh, it shows as well uh, that there is a growing civil revolt in Germany because the political class no longer, and in particular the German financial finance minister, no longer no longer reflects what um, uh, the German public thinks. Um, there is a discrepancy, a growing discrepancy between German public opinion uh, and um, the opinion of Mr. Schäuble, who thinks that uh, the German interests are served best if they are decided by the French uh, the head of the Treasury. Um, <clears throat> let me say a few words about uh, this uh, really final version, which will not take but a few seconds, about the perspectives. Europe is in a very severe crisis. It is a crisis due to the failure of politics and to the failure of the policy conducted by the European Commission, by the European Central Bank, and by most of the European member states, not to mention countries like, like uh, Greece. Um, it cannot be cured without changing the stuff. It cannot be cured by complacency or by new um, verbose speeches on Europe is without alternative. These are tried commonplaces. Europe needs radical institutional reform and with the personnel and the staff within the European Commission, particularly Mr. Barroso and the European Central Bank, things can no longer uh, be changed to the positive because they are the people who led us on that path or the herding path. And you know, when there is a, a group of sheep herding, only the precipice puts a limit <laughs> to such a group of sheep. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of that precipice, and I don't want to sacrifice billions and billions of taxpayers' money to uh, rescue something which, by its design perhaps, but at least by the way it has been shaped, will not work. So we have to think about a process of, um, first of all, allowing members of the Eurozone to leave the Eurozone. This is not foreseen the treaty, and uh, unfortunately the members of government of the Council has totally neglected that process and that idea. How can members leave the European uh, Monetary Union? Portugal's interest would be served best by leaving the Eurozone better today than tomorrow, uh, by competitive de devaluation. That is the only way for them to buy time in order to reorganize their national economy. I don't see any other chance. And again, I say I have great respect for the Portuguese people. I have great respect for the Portuguese economy. I have great respect for the Portuguese civil society. And I find despicable uh, terms like the pig states, uh, or as the <coughs> German former member of the uh, president of the uh, um, Confederation of German Industry, Mr. Henkel, say the olive states. Uh, I have them. the dignity of a nation does not depend on the gross national product. Full stop. This is my value. But we have to give a chance, an institutional chance, to help these countries to become competitive again. And I know many, many um, Portuguese people, I know that they are great workers, great skills, and uh, the future is theirs if the institutional framework will fit that particular uh, effort, which is not the case today. So we have to flexibilize entry and uh, exit before the stronger members finally leave. We have to find a system of severe sanctioning and automatic sanctioning, which is impossible with France. Because we, if ever you have to talk about automatic sanctioning or failing fiscal policy, France refuses even to discuss that. France is a great obstacle to the rule of law within the European community in general. It is the great obstacle 
to the functioning of the European Monetary Union at present. Without France, everything is possible within, within the European Monetary Union. With France, the reform of the European Monetary Union is impossible. And those of you who want to read my lecture at Oxford University in 1997 at St. Anthony's College, entitled Europe without France, question mark, German notes on the French question, uh, I'm totally invited to send me an email. I will send you that uh, 